I'm joined now by Gary Seymour in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He was the U.S. representative during the 2010 Nuclear Summit uh, Security Summit here in Washington and also the 2012 summit in Seoul. So, Gary, uh, first things first, this first Trump-Kim face-to-face happens with a somewhat more casual dinner on Wednesday night. What will you be watching for as it seems to set the scene for the summit? Well, we won't know the results of the summit until Thursday. And in particular, the communique will have two main elements. First, there will be some concrete steps that both sides will take, include everything from North Korean willingness to let U.S. visitors go to the nuclear test site and the missile engine test site that's being dismantled, or it could be something more significant, like dismantling Yongbyon. On the U.S. side, that will be symbolic measures, like establishing a liaison office or a declaration to end the Korean War, or something more substantial, like lifting uh, economic sanctions on South North uh, economic projects. Then the second part of the communique will focus on both leaders' commitment to negotiate an overall roadmap for denuclearization, a peace regime on the Korean Peninsula, a normalization of bilateral relations, and hopefully they will authorize their representatives on, on the U.S. side, Steve Began, on the North Korean side, Ambassador Kim Kyok Chol, to try to reach an agreement within some period of time, six months or nine months, and then set a deadline for Trump and Kim to meet again for their third summit. Based on what happened back in June, how much of this meeting in Hanoi is building on that initial meeting, and how different is this meeting from that one? And, and then talk to us about this potential third uh, summit that could take place. Do you think that will actually be needed? Oh, there's no question about it. There will be many summits needed. You know, this is only one small step. The Hanoi meeting is not going to produce some dramatic breakthrough to resolve all the problems. We're looking at a process that will require many years of labor, way past the Trump administration. And that's going to mean that there will need to be periodic meetings at the summit level, plus, of course, there are many, many more meetings at the working level. and. Uh, in order to move the process forward. So I think what happened in Singapore was a beginning, but the follow-through on Singapore was very weak, mainly because the North Koreans refused to engage with the U.S. on negotiating details of steps forward. So I think what we'll see out of the Hanoi summit is a commitment for the uh, a lower level officials who have to work out the details to actually try to come to an agreement that uh, President Trump and Chairman Kim can approve at some point in the future, whether it's six months or nine months or a year. There's not very much time left for the Trump uh, first term. So I think probably there's a window of about a year or two in which to make progress. And then after that, President Trump will be consumed by his reelection campaign, and we're not likely to see much energy or focus on North Korea. Let's turn to the U.S. president for a moment. The geopolitical landscape looks a little bit different than it did back in 2010 and 2012. Walk us through the negotiating process, if you can, and what Trump will bring to the table with his words, his flattery, his personality, some of what we've already seen in this preview to the meeting on Twitter. Well, what North Korea wants is economic relief. North Korea's primary objective is to accept limits and constraints on its nuclear weapons program, not give them up, but to accept limits on the program in exchange for sanctions relief, economic assistance, development aid, trade and investment. And the U.S., to some extent, holds the key because some sanctions will have to be uh, lifted or eased through the U.N. or U.S. domestic sanctions in order to make all of that possible. So the U.S. bargaining leverage is sanctions relief. The North Korean bargaining leverage are limits and constraints 
on their nuclear program. And that will be the basic quid pro quo that the two leaders will discuss, and ultimately the details, including timing and sequencing and verification, all of these important elements will have to be negotiated by Began and Ambassador Kim in order to work out the actual arrangements for an agreement. All right, Gary Seymour, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.